Give and grow. What is up? What is up? Welcome to the road to becoming millionaires. Yeah. Seems like we're taking a long way right now, but oh, nonetheless. The, the extra long way. <laughs> nonetheless, we're learning. Man, is this the first red week? What's it uh, been like? Yeah, it's been like first... five like five or six weeks. Yeah, I think that's like a the... month and a half. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was crazy. This is the first red week we've had in the market in like six or seven weeks. Um, what do you think the difference was this week, man? I know last week we didn't really get to talk a lot because um, I was out of town at Pickwick. Right. Um, but I know since then... Um, they paused on the interest rates for the time yep, being. Yeah, they paused interest rates. Uh, um, you know, debatable, hawkish pause. Is this is this a green light for more upside? We you know we really don't know. But uh, but then this week Powell testified, uh, you know again, and I think that he was even more hawkish this week. But I think the market is uh, either just forgetting Powell completely, forgetting the Fed completely, and just running on, or you know. With it being a red week, it might be some, you know, it might be the start this of something. Might, this might be a start, you know. We'll it see. might, it might be the start of something, but we're not going to be counting on it uh, just yet, uh, because you know, I'm not saying that like everything is going to be okay, but it's like we really need a real reason for more downside. Uh, rate hikes, in my opinion, should have been that, but you know, market seems to not care about that stuff right now. So right now. For July's FOMC, there's about between 70 to 80 percent chance that we're going to do another 25 basis point hike. Yeah, right now the CME tool was reading uh, 70 to 80 percent. Okay, cool. I mean, which you know, I mean, there's there's the pullback. It, it might be trying to price in one rate hike. I was telling earlier, the market could be trying to price in one rate hike, uh, but I don't think that they're trying to price in two. I think that that they're trying to price in maybe one, and maybe a pause. No, oh, so, sorry, sorry, not a pause, a, a cut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, an, you know, another cut. Or, or, or maybe just like multiple pauses, I don't know. But I think the market is trying to do those things right now, you know, not financial advice because, yes, you know, it sounds, you know, if they do cut this year, that would be really good uh, for uh, for the markets going, going in, or well, actually the, the economy in general. Uh, but you never know because, you know, 2% is the Fed's uh, inflation target. Yes, sir. And they, you know, Powell said and, you know, other Fed members have said during this time that they're a long way away from 2%. So That's right. That's right. Were you surprised at all by Bitcoin this week? Uh, you know, honestly, I'm not. Uh, I, think, I think due to the fact, you know, that stocks have been running so high. And you know the crypto market has kind of been just stagnant a bit, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, you know, you know, maybe they're sensing that stocks are probably starting to peak, and they're like, okay, well now let's jump into crypto. But you know, I was telling him earlier, and you know, y'all can y'all can say whatever you want about this, but I think I think if, if people are getting into crypto, means meme stocks, small cap, uh, small cap stocks. I think that they're anticipating that, you know, it's it's time to just keep going up because, you know, indexes, if those are are all going up and, and, and staying well, then I think that that's when people can start getting into the other markets like crypto. and Awesome. Awesome. What else I wanted to mention, um, I'm going to start doing a mini series on the shorts. I'm going to start a little, a little dividend portfolio. I'm not going to start it until um, we have another leg down not saying it's going to be a huge leg down but you know the market never goes straight up and never goes straight down it always kind of zigs and zags um yeah. in, a, in a direction but just just a little change you know it's not something I'm, I'm looking to uh necessarily make a lot of wealth like overnight it's just it's just more of a long-term thing something to study i want to start mixing all those things and just continuing the education we've already had continue to build on that but um, I think it'll be fun. Let us know if you like that idea and just let us know some other ideas, stuff you all want to see. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to end up keeping that portfolio, but if the Lord blesses me with a kid or a child one day, you know, might that might be a gift to them. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we'll dividend, see. Dividend for the kids. Yeah, yeah. What are uh, what are some of your favorite dividend stocks? I mean, you know, SCHD. You like SCHD? Which is funny, funny because, you know, ETF. you were telling me today that uh, they lowered their, their quarterly dividend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, I mean, you know. My, you know, and I don't know if that's if that's bad news. I don't know if they're trying to anticipate something, but you know, you never know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a sign of something.
Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, there's a bunch of ones that that you can do dividends with. You know, honestly, even like, even like VTI and VU. You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? Those, yeah, those indexes, as, you can get dividends. Not they're not they're not considered dividend stocks, but you know, people can definitely get dividends from them. But like, you know, you know, Jeppy, J J E P Y, uh, sorry, J E P I. Yeah, I, I could be wrong about Jeppy, but I, I think they somehow with their collected premium they sell it. I I don't know. I have to. I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't. I haven't cited it enough, but I have seen Jeppy, and I do. I do. What does it pay? Like a ten percent? It's it's something like that. Yeah. I mean, crazy. last month I saw it was like twelve, but you know that it probably changed just like mm-hmm. just like SCHD did. From what I understand, you're not going to get a lot of growth out of it as a stock right right but right. you're gonna get figured. that consistent dividends yeah people like it yeah so it, it's like you're getting the actual dividend payouts but mm-hmm. the actual value of the stocks are probably not going to be uh yeah going up because you know schd has like a lot of those like really really well-known uh dividend companies that are you know consistent yeah yeah consistent yeah. uh buffett probably owns like like a lot of a lot of shares and like a lot of them so you know you know i don't, I don't know yeah i mean what other like single companies do you like as far as dividends uh honestly i haven't really looked into it very much because i've been just i mean i mean i've been watching a lot of videos on like and and, and researching uh shd mm-hmm. so I, I personally haven't really seen so is that something you know i mean this isn't financial advice but if we have another leg down is that something you plan to get into is shd oh yeah 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 okay. i think uh definitely that uh as far as like dividends because you know to me and you know we might have different opinions on this but you know yep. i think the roth is a good place to, to to stick your shares of like dividend stocks because you know you get the growth on the stocks like what he was talking about you get the dividends and all of it's tax-free yeah, yeah. so it's like you know if you're looking at, you know you're probably not going to be expecting some like crazy growth, but you know, if you took a percentage of, you know, of, like a dividend stock and then let's say you had like a million dollars in there at, at some point, yeah. you know, let's say, you know, let's say you're like quarterly, you're like quarterly dividend. Sorry. Sorry. Let's say you're like yearly dividend in total was like six or 7%. Okay. That's, that's, shoot, that's, that'd be nice. that, that's 60, yeah. 60, 70 K just off holding those. So yeah. Yeah. Take a second to get there. But no, I mean, that's that's a cool strategy. You know, I think the more money I make throughout the years, the more I'll, I'll shift my allocation into dividend right. stocks or that's dividend true. ETFs. Um, just because yeah. at that point, I probably won't want to do as much work. But I don't know. I really love this. So Your dividends can just re- reinvest themselves into, into other yeah. things. That's, that's like kind of like the... When you sit back and you think about the whole machine, that's the beauty of it. You oh know, gosh, it's just it's, it's it's efficiency. Just... But, you know, time, time's the biggest thing. Um, yeah time and money run kind of in kind of in like parallel right you know mm -hmm. you know the more money you have the more time you have uh but uh in this case the more time you have to make money the more money you'll make because you have more time to actually let it grow i saw i saw this reddit post and and this kid (laughs) of course you did this kid no 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 no, no, (laughs) listen listen this listen this this kid this kid was like yeah um you know i want some financial advice Uh, i've saved like like thirty thousand dollars. Oh, nice. And, and and he's like fifteen, you know, you know, and he's like, wow. He's like, you know, should I put it in like, you know, in like a, in like a dividend stock? Should I put it into the spy? And imagine me in fifteen, and making money, preparing to put it into your Roth, but also to letting that grow. And, and like obviously, you know, there's there's some like, I mean, there's like he, different ways. If he of, never added a single dime to it, he'd be a millionaire. Maybe even a multimillionaire by the time he's sixty-five. We can talk about the state of the market because it's uh, it's a it's a battle out there right now, right? Yeah, it's a battle. I have a question about that actually. Um, I notice, you know, in um, Asian markets have getting they've been getting beaten down pretty bad lately. Uh, I notice the EU the same um, from a global standpoint. Do you think that carries over into our markets pretty soon? You know, we're kind of like the lagging country not that not that we're like behind but like things kind of start to affect us a, a little bit later compared like like when everyone else is, is getting kind of kind of beaten down well yeah and having we're gonna res- come in from behind well, yeah and having the reserve currency you know all this debt is is owed with our dollar you know right like, right we're the right. lenders yeah yeah, yeah 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 we're so the that, lenders that does um put us in a, a different situation for sure something that we talked about before you know how like you know when uh when warren buffett doesn't have 
confidence in like in like U.S. stocks. Then you say that he gets into like Japanese bonds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's He's like doing that recently. If it's not there, then it's definitely not going to be here. Uh, you know, in the you know, oh, I mean, well, I mean, buying buying at like a really good price is probably one thing, but. Yeah, obviously um, he still has all his positions, but as far as like his future buys, right. he's going to look for that advantage. So that I mean that's a good question. You know what is, what yeah, yeah. is where the, is he going to uh, go? You know, is it gold? Is it silver? You know, I, I don't think uh, the Oracle is ever going to buy cryptocurrency, but who knows? No, probably not. <laughs> probably not. I mean, I, you know, a lot of the the thing about Buffett that I like so much, a lot of the guys that he's hired throughout the years. Um, he's really allowed them to kind of innovate and come in at a different angle. Like all of a sudden, if you look at the Berkshire portfolio, you see like Snowflake, you know, obviously they've got their huge position in Apple, but just a lot more tech companies where they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't really do that in the past. But I don't want to make this a Warren Buffett thing so I could talk about him all day. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) But I I just, I like to see that even in his, his older age, you know, he's still allowing himself to grow by, you know, hiring younger guys who oh, yeah. are interested in those other markets. And they have the, because, you know, his big thing is if he doesn't understand it, he just kind of skips over it. But he's brought these yeah, guys in. Like he, he trusts the way they invest and he knows they understand it. Well, he allows them, he lets them put positions into it. So. But we talked about how, uh, how basically, you know, currency changes over, over time, you know, you know, because we mentioned how, People had all of their treasure in like a in like a castle, yeah. And then you know it became like you know you know like a coin. Uh, then it became something like a dollar, like a paper currency. Yeah. And th- and then you know now we have stuff like you know, I mean then after that you know we started to get like you know like stocks and you know ETFs all that stuff. Crypto is just the next thing. You know what I mean? It's and yeah, yeah. you know you know we're definitely you know here in Give and Grow we're definitely not like people that are like oh well crypto is just stupid. Honestly, a lot of it, a lot of it is speculative. A lot of it is not, uh, you know, it, a lot of it can be pump and dumps. And, you know, if you ever, if you just watch the news and seeing how many pump and dumps crypto has, uh, you know, the, the, we probably have like freaking 30 episodes on those, but we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. But yeah, it is the future. And it, it is cool that Buffett is starting to kind of like, you know, understand that times are changing. The culture is changing. Uh, but you know, I think I think that Bitcoin specifically, and just like the blockchain in general, is just something that you can't just skip over. No, Be, because eventually, what I'm what I'm predicting is that is that like these uh, this is the way that businesses are going to operate. You're not going to be giving cash to people anymore. You're going to be like, okay, well here's Bitcoin up here, uh, you know, take it from the blockchain, and then you yeah. you know you get access to like. I don't know, uh, like a building or, you know, you buy like ice cream or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. If you want a great book about Bitcoin and just currencies throughout the years, the Bitcoin standard, I highly recommend it. Awesome book. Check it out. Going back to the dollar. My wife Lydia showed me this, this, uh, this TikTok of, uh, this (laughs) guy who was talking about how the media has kind of been glazing over over the dollar getting devalued and, and he was like you know you know while uh, and this happened i think like like either like a couple weeks ago or like maybe like a month ago some sometime recent within within the past few months how like china and russia were like meeting together and like signing like a bunch of documents and you know it's their it, it's the begin sorry it's the start what a lot of people believe is the war on the dollar yeah and you know the thing that was that that the media was pushing out to everyone was Trump's indictment. Mm. So it's like, so it's like, you know, you know, that guy was explaining that like, you know, we're focused on, on Trump. You got world powers over here, you know, doing the stuff. And it's like, let's talk about what could happen if the dollar was devalued. Because I know that like, you've been reading, you've been reading, uh, a, you know, you know, some books or like, or like maybe studying some people about, um, about like you know what would happen in that case. So what like what do you think would happen if the dollar got like truly devalued past where it's at right now? Well, it would be it'd be pretty scary. Um, I don't think it's gonna happen in our lifetime though. Honestly, it probably I, not. I think I I mean all great empires come to an end. I mean we've seen that throughout history, and that's probably gonna happen with America one day. It's probably gonna happen with our currency. You know, eventually, like you're saying, there's gonna be this jump to the digital currencies, just like. Back in the day, you had this jump from the gold, you know, yeah. to the paper money, 
uh, to, you know, to where we are now. Um, I think it's going to be no different, no different with the dollar one day. But like I said, I think it's just going to be a long time before that happens. Um, you know, there could potentially be wars. Yeah, I mean, they're they're definitely. And I'm not. This is not. I mean, I'm just a 33 year old man. You know, I've I've read a lot of books. I like to study this stuff. Um, but just in my opinion, I don't think the dollar is valued correctly right now. I think we're going to have right. another jump and it's, it's value pretty soon, but that's, right. that's not financial advice. <laughs> um, it's just, that is it's just, just an opinion of a man. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I mean, have y'all seen the dollar recently? Have y'all seen the dollar index and yeah, uh, I was about to say the VIX, you know, let's not even talk about, we'll talk about the VIX. That's later. A whole... <laughs> we'll talk about the VIX later, but, uh, but like, you know, going, going back to, uh, going back to, uh, to, uh, the dollar. As long as the dollar is the reserve currency, there's right. going to be power there because all that debt, you know, that's, that's leverage that America has over other countries. Right. You know, are they trying to change that rapidly? Are they trying to devalue the dollar? Yes. But I mean, what's it going to take for that to actually happen when it's all said and done? Man, see, see, I just, it's going to take just, war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's going to take mean, war. I mean, I mean but, but like, that's what I'm saying is that China and Russia doing this, it might, it might just be the beginning of something. It could. It could I mean, be it very the beginning well of something. Could be. Yeah. But anyways, you know, getting away from my politics, let's get back. Let's get back to the charts. Let's talk about the VIX. Right? Oh, well, real fast. I'm sorry. If you're interested in currency, I, I talked about the Bitcoin standard, but check out um, Ray Dalio, any of his books, Principles. Uh, I think it's called the, uh, I'll have to put it in the comments below what the other one's called. Is it the Changing World Order or something like that? But um, fantastic book about currencies. And if you look at, his timeline that he's kind of made throughout history with all this. I mean, it does appear that there is about to be some devaluation and some tension going on in the United States. So it's pretty interesting if you want to read it. Um, but yeah, just check that out. But yeah, the VIX, um, uh, the VIX, you know, you know, the VIX measures volatility, uh, you know, you know, volatility, uh, you know, it's a fear, it measures fear basically. Uh, what do you think about the VIX being so low? I mean, you know, you know, I saw the VIX go down to like twelve point like nine, twelve point eight today around, or today or yesterday. Did it end up being positive today at all? I didn't get to see. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I know that it got very close to going back in the red, but um, I think that we actually ended up uh, being positive on on the VIX. Yeah, but I, it's still very very low. Yeah, I think when it comes to derivatives, there's just so much underlying stuff going on. It, it's it's just hard to tell. I mean, I don't, I don't have the correct answer. I mean, I've heard, you know, the zero days to expiration options has a big um, role on all this. Right. But I just think underlying derivatives. Um, eventually, when we look back, we'll we'll kind of understand what was going on. But for right now, I I just think something's brewing. Not sure what it is. Something's brewing. But obviously. Um, the VIX is, you know, not acting like its normal self. Right. So L let me ask you this because yeah. I've been, I've been thinking about, I've been thinking about the VIX a lot and trying to get, you know, trying to get both sides of the VIX because, you know, for a long time, I always, you know, I always looked at like support resistance levels, uh, you know, uh, you know, different things, kind of like, you know, stochastics and like, you know, even like the, you know, just like stuff like that, the CCI, or whatever, yeah. on the, you know, on the VIX, and I've come. I've come to a conclusion that the VIX is very, very, since it, since it doesn't act like a company stock, mm -hmm. that it's, that I don't think that it necessarily follows a lot of that, a lot of those same kind of like rules uh, with like, you know, okay, well, you know, oh, as far look as at like the time the, frame. As far as like the technical analysis. Right, 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 right. Yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah tech I think that technical analysis on the VIX, I'm not saying it doesn't matter, but it's not as important as what some people might think. What do you yeah, think about I've, that? Yeah, I've heard that before. I, I completely agree. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about derivatives. It's about supply and demand. Mm -hmm. It's about positioning, bigger institutions. There's a whole, there's a whole bigger chess game going on underneath. Right. And, you know, retail investors like you and I, and probably most of our followers, you know, um, it's our job just to hedge ourselves with everything we do, you know, yeah. because no one can correctly guess the market. I mean, look at everybody who thought we were about to be have this crazy, you know, bear run, you know, in January, you know, starting in October. It's like, oh, my gosh, here we go. Went up a little bit. 
January, we're like, all right, getting ready, recession, but what's happened? You know, the market has rallied. You know, we've had this this kind of um, tech, I don't want to call it a tech bubble, but we've kind of had this this tech run. And the more I learn about it, um, if, if you actually understand options, derivatives, the way they position themselves, the way big institutions hedge themselves, um, and just kind of learning how the OPEX and the um, and how all those things work, um, it's not really a surprise to me that we're seeing what we're seeing. It's all about positioning. As soon as we think that we're going in one direction, it's typically a setup to go in the other direction. And, yeah. it's, and it's all about the underlying derivatives. I know I've said that a lot, but yeah. that's why underlying derivatives. as regular investors, you hedge, you hedge, you hedge. And that's something that we didn't do well, you know, in January. But yeah. hey, we got the rest of our lives to do this. So that's that's yeah. the beauty of it. Yeah, get ready to learn about diagonal spreads because we are going to be utilizing those like crazy um, when we get out of these plays. You know, we're definitely hedged. Uh, you know, a little more to the downside right now. Uh, you know, you know. I mean, I didn't dump everything into into short plays, uh, but uh, you know, in my Roth, it's definitely something where it's like, you know, I want that to be a little more on the on like. Uh, Kind of like the buy and hold uh, dividend. I mean, you know, you know, we have a full plan of like, of like allocations for like, you know, uh, selling options and doing like, you know, dividend stocks, even like single stock going going long. This experience, uh, this bull run has definitely uh, helped to give me more perspective about, you know, we are we are we are in this for the long haul. Yes, sir. And that you know, yeah, we look at everything kind of from like a day to day, week to week. Mm -hmm. uh, perspective, but you know, we also got to look at things uh, from now until the time we retire, which you know, absolutely. You know, it's kind of funny. I was looking back on some of our first episodes, and we talked about you know, if there was a little crash, so we went down, you know, 20 25 percent. Uh, we, we, we mentioned some stocks to buy over three episodes, and I think it was a combination of like Nvidia, Berkshire, Apple, Amazon, oh, Tesla. Yeah. Um, and then I think Coinbase was actually one Coinbase of them Coinbase was, yeah, that randomly. was on the riskier ones. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's funny though, because if you would have actually taken that advice and bought in those stocks, you would have been doing very well oh, you've been over the last uh, the last six months. Yeah. But yeah. you know what? I mean, that's, that's fine because, you know, we're learning, you know, options. At the end of the day, I, I just think options are just awesome. Like what you can do with them. Um, you, but you just... I know you have to understand the yes. risk with them yeah. and understand how to use them. Absolutely. Absolutely. But they're as a tool for investing for the rest of our investing careers, it's worth knowing how to do them going forward. Like, oh, yeah, I'm absolutely. okay. I'm okay that we went through this. Oh yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. Learning I'm I mean, gonna look back and be thankful for this time. Yeah, pain honestly. I mean, pain's been a great teacher, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, that's that's kinda like where where we've been for a while. And you know, if we didn't have this experience, we we probably would have been just doing the same the same crazy stuff and you know, eventually, you know, it's you probably just be buying the dip. Well, 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 buying the dip, but also too, <laughs> we could have been doing this with like a lot more money. Yeah, it yeah. would have been down a lot more. But like, oh you yeah, know, yeah. You know, you know what we have, you know, in our accounts is like a very small percentage of our of our portfolio. Absolutely. Overall net worth. Absolutely. Sorry. Man, I've enjoyed this conversation. Oh, yeah. This has been great. I like just kind of doing these freestyle ones. Yeah, yeah. This is, it's fun. Um, Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Man, I think uh, I think I'm good. I'm just ready to enjoy the weekend. Oh yeah, take some time. I know uh, we might uh, have some fun tonight with the family. Oh safe. yeah, yeah, yeah. Eat some good food. Well, guys, we love y'all. Let's continue to give and grow.